Hey, everybody, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. How are you today? I don't know about you, but all day I've been operating as if today was Friday. I think I'm rushing the holiday weekend, perhaps. I was telling everybody, have a good weekend. And, uh, you know, the tests we normally do on Friday, I thought we were going to be doing today, you know, the grocery shopping, other things like that. And everybody said, Jim, it's still only Thursday. I know you're, you're like everybody else. You're rushing the days because you want to get to warm weather and the summer and vaccines taken care of and all the hopeful things happening. So it's Thursday and it's really nice to see you on this Thursday. <laughs> Welcome to our entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we have done. I think it's somewhere around 375 episodes now live, just about seven days a week live, Monday through Sunday. Sunday through Sunday, every single day, weekends and weekdays. Sometimes we do two shows a day. Uh, if we've got a special guest at a special time, maybe uh, in a later time zone like this weekend on Saturday, we have two shows, one at three o'clock and one at seven. So we've got double love -a tea coming your way on uh, Saturday. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're having a great, uh, those of you who celebrated Passover, we hope you've had a blessed Passover. Those who are looking forward to uh, Peter Cottontail coming and Easter weekend, wish you a blessed Easter as well. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. Think sort of those older talk shows of the past, perhaps, you know, Dick Cavett, the legends, the greats, uh, Johnny Carson and Steve Allen, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas the warm, welcoming, inviting conversations that draw you in. I've always loved that style, very similar to my personality anyway, on and off the air. Uh, I do this work professionally in the real world in television, radio uh, stage as a TV and radio presenter, personality, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist. So we created this show as an entertainment lifestyle talk show series, something I wanted to do for the longest time, but never had the time because I was so busy always so busy, but we put the TV cameras in and lights and the whole bit, and we launched it last April. We're coming up on our one-year anniversary real soon. Going to have a great celebration towards early May, celebrating all of our Lovety viewers. They're called the Loveties because I stumbled on the word Lovety accidentally when I said it in the summertime. So the viewers are part of our Lovety squad, and we welcome you all. They call me Mr. Lovety. They call our uh, studio here, Lovety Hall, and they welcome all of our guests uh, with levity too, which I think is kind of cool. The world kind of needs a little bit more levity, right? Compassion, empathy, and uh, levity. So we say light love and levity and levity. How's everybody doing? We've got an amazing guest. Good things come to those who wait. Our very special guest is Hollywood legend and actor and author and comedian extraordinaire, Hank Garrett. And he's got this amazing book about his life. He grew up in the streets of the Bronx, New York. He lives in LA. And the story from the road between New York and Hollywood is extraordinary. And he tells it in his new book. We're going to talk about that in just a second and welcome him live and direct from California. He's excited to be here. It is our honor and pleasure to have him here on the show so we're going to welcome him in just two seconds. First, why don't we chime in? We always like to welcome our lovely viewers that are watching all around the world. Those of you watching on our YouTube channel, if you haven't, uh, we would love it if you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our amazing content. If you saw the channel today and you also saw our Facebook page, you saw a lot of guests coming up in uh, recent days or future days, that is, um, we have a lot of amazing guests that are coming up and we posted some of those on the YouTube channel so you can see. So check that out. And again, click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our amazing content, the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, and also our Masters Mantras inspirational videos as well. They're sort of like TikTok videos, but we do them on our page at Masters Mantras on the Gym Masters TV page. Willie is there in Holland. She's always there. Hello, Jim. I'm here for a night of enjoyment. Uh, greeting from my Masters family here. Absolutely. All the loveties are here assembled. So is uh, San Diego's famous Dante CD. That's right. He is the talk of the town in San Diego, and he is here on the Gym Masters show live. Hello, loveties. Welcome to Liberty Hall from 
Dante. Dante is the one, I came up with the word levity, but Dante is the one that said that this is Lovety Hall. So we've run with that. Thank you very much, Dante CD. <laughs> Danilo. Uh, Merlin is in Canada. Good to see you, uh, Merlin, in Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Jim and all lovelies. Be back in a while having supper. Enjoy. We're here for you. Hello, Jim and lovely friends. Mary Bishop in Florida. Good to see you, Mary. Uh, you and I were just chatting earlier today, weren't we, Mary? Crystal Nolan in Connecticut. Hi, Jim and everyone. Happy Thursday. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Looking forward to an epic show. We got our work cut out for us then with inspiring conversation and lovity. Absolutely. Good evening, Mr. Lovity, and good evening, Lovities from Linda Odell in St. Augustine, Florida. Nice to see you, Linda. And Wozniak is here joining us on our entertainment lifestyle talk show series, The Gym Master Show Live. She goes, Happy Thursday evening, Jim, and all Lovity family. Good to see you as well. And Dante CD says, Hello, Jim. Hope you're feeling good. Nice to be able to make this wonderful show. We are fantastic here on our end, and I hope things are good on your end as well, Dante. Danilo. From South Africa, Juanita is here. Hello, Jim and Lovety Squad. Good to see you. Can't wait for April 3rd. And you know why, my friend. <laughs> There's a special package coming from South Africa, I hear. And I'm. we have to pick it up on April 3rd, I was told. Can't wait. And there's a package that came in from wonderful Maureen uh, that we're going to uh, open up. Uh, we didn't get a chance to open it yet. We have the box here. We're going to open it up uh, on the air probably uh, either tomorrow or Saturday. We have two shows on Saturday. Hey, Jim. Hope you had a good day. Hi, everyone. Kathleen Walker in New York City. Good to see you as well. Nice, nice, nice. And I like all of these great comments. Kathy Short from Cleveland. Hello. Happy Friday, everyone. Good to see you in Cleveland, in Southern California. Anne is here. Anne Harrickson is here. Happy Thursday, everyone. Great to be here live. Love Jim and the Lovities. We love you back, Anne, in SoCal. And that's where our guest is right now, in Southern California. Absolutely, absolutely. Good stuff. Christine Clifton is here from North Carolina. Happy Thursday, Jim and lovely friends from a cool and windy North Carolina tonight. Welcome, actor, comedian Hank Garrett to the show. Let the lovely and levity begin. Okay, good stuff. Willie is toasting and cheering and everybody's having a good time tonight. I don't think we missed anybody. If we did, we'll try to circle back and uh, get your comments in. Some people like to comment. Our Lovety Squad likes to be very active, and we love that during the live show, but a lot of people also just quietly watch, and that's perfectly fine, too. And those of you who are going to be watching this later in the archives, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. Hey, you remember this face? Do you remember Car 54? Where are you? Yes, he starred in that legendary sitcom and you can still see re-airs of that as well we're talking about legendary hank garrett but did you ever see this photo mm -hmm. yes incredible isn't it he's had such an, an extraordinary career his book here it is uh, we're going to talk about it at great length from harlem hoodlum to hollywood heavyweight hank garrett it's an incredible story and you can see the various photos there too matter of fact we have those photos right there that are on the cover of the book. And there's another one there from various roles in his legendary Hollywood career. And uh, we'll talk about this as well. Yes, the G.I. Joe involvement and so much more. Look at these photos. <laughs> I would say, I said to Frank, I don't think I would ever say no to him. And I will always give him five stars, wouldn't you? If you came across a look that looks like that. Or how about this? <laughs> but he's a good looking guy. He's a talent. He's a, you know what I like? He's a straight shooter. He's originally from New York. Uh, he's very open about his life. He's, uh, he's just one of those salt of the earth guys, talent extraordinaire, you know, Hollywood legend. But when you talk to him, it's as if you're talking over the back fence to a buddy, to a friend, to a longtime neighbor. And I think that's really a rare quality. We sort of bring that back here on this show. I know the guests say that. Many of you viewers are loving to say you feel so warm and welcome and invited here. I hear it from all the guests. I get these letters and posts, comments, phone calls from the guests saying they felt so welcome here. And that's exactly what we like to do. So join me in welcoming Hollywood legend and actor, author, comedian, Hank Garrett for some levity and good times right now on the Gym Master Show Live. 
Hank, welcome to the show, my friend. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure, I assure you. So how are you today? How are you doing? I know you're very busy because the book is going well, huh? It's doing wonderfully. And the, the fact is that the proceeds go to the disabled American veterans. Beautiful. And also, uh, we've started a thing called Hanksters Kids. And what we're doing is we're going to be having a place to get the kids off the streets. I was a street kid. I lived on the street. In fact, at times I slept in cardboard boxes. So I know what it's like. Yeah. And I've seen so many children in such deep trouble. In fact, uh, we go to places where the children are incarcerated. Mm, yes. And we talk to them. Yeah. And I tell them my, my aim is to let you know that I was there exactly where you are right now. Uh, God sent me an angel by the name of Sammy Davis Jr. who got me off the street. Mm. And I tell the kids, there's an angel out there waiting for each and every one of you, but you've got to be ready to listen with your ears and your heart. That and I've so got true. letters gotten letters from the kids mm. and they said uh sammy davis jr was your angel and mr garrett you're our angel mm. in fact i've got that is beautiful that is beautiful hank really this is, is a picture of the mascot myself as a kid was always in trouble and uh thank to dear lord here I am today. And looking so, good, I tell you, looking good and, uh, you know, full of uh, vim and vigor. And I want to show you <laughs> some of the lovity that's coming your way from our lovity squad of viewers from all around the world. Mary Bishop in Florida, Sunny FLA says, uh, hello, Hank. Welcome to Lovity Hall from Mary Willie, where it's uh, 20 after 1 a.m. She's up with us in Holland. Welcome, Hank. Have fun with our Mr. Lovity. <laughs> she is wonderful in uh, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Kathy is in Cleveland. Welcome, Hank, to the land of Lovities. Crystal in Connecticut. Hi, Hank. Welcome to Lovity Hall. Juanita in South Africa. Welcome to the show, Hank. Kathleen in New York City, your old stomping grounds. She's uh not Bronx, but she's just across the river in Queens. <laughs> Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen Walker welcomes you and Linda. Uh, good wow. evening, Hank. You're now a lovety. She's in St. Augustine, uh, Florida. I mean, all of this uh, love, cheers coming in from Willie and Holland and, and so much more. Christine welcoming you as well from North Carolina. So some nice warm welcomes coming in from uh, the viewers, which I think is fantastic. Wonderful. Thank they you so much and thank all you wonderful people out there. Oh, it's our uh, pleasure. Oh, I am truly flattered. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure and well-deserved, my friend. The, the book is, again, extraordinary and it's getting such great uh, reviews, five-star reviews, and people really are loving it. Let's, let's go back in time a little bit to that young boy growing up in New York City. What were some of those experiences like, your family? Um, you know, obviously you have this ability to be an extraordinary entertainer, but also, you know, a real physical athlete as well. And uh, tell us about some of the inspirations in your life early on yes. um, in the big city when you were a kid. Uh, I was what they call a street hoodlum. Uh, I, as I said, mentioned, I'm living on the street and uh, I was always in trouble, yeah. always. Uh, I learned to fight at a very early age. In fact, uh, a member of a gang broke my nose when I was nine years old. And I started training martial arts uh, when I was 11 all for the wrong reason. I wanted to be a better street fighter. And my teacher, my sensei, said that I'm in the wrong place. If you want to learn to fight on the street, you do not belong here. And so I learned from him uh, 
respect and humility. And I started to change a little, but not enough. Well, my mother and father were fruit and vegetable peddlers off a push cart. And they had no time for me. I was born very late in life to them. My father was in his 50s and my mother was in her late 40s. They just didn't have time because they were spending 15, 16 hours a day just trying to make a living. Well, my, a customer of my mom's who was, happened to be the mayor of Harlem. And my mom was crying to him about my being in trouble. And he came, to speak, he came over to me. And the first thing he did, I'm 12 years old and I'm smoking. I'm standing on the street corner smoking. And he slapped the cigarette out of my mouth. I didn't know who he was. And I started to cock my fist. And two massive mountains walked toward me. They were his bodyguards. Mm -hmm. So I thought better of throwing a punch. Yeah. And he said, uh, I, I spoke to your mama. And she wants me to take you out. And I thought, my mother's putting a hit on me. <laughs> right. So he said, no, no, no. I'm taking you somewhere. Right. He said, do you have a suit? And I said, yeah, I've got a suit. He says, put on your suit tonight. He said, but before you do, take a bath. I went, oh, I hate this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he picked me up. And, and brought me to the famous Apollo Theater in Harlem. Mm, yeah. I'm from Harlem. I'm 111th between Park and Lexington. Right. So I learned to fight at a very early age. So now, go to the Apollo Theater. We don't go into the theater, but we went into Sammy Davis Jr.'s dressing room. Mm. And I didn't know much about him other than he was... A, a renowned star. Well, go in, and Sammy Davis said, uh, yeah, and, and the mayor said, this is the kid I was telling you about. He said, hey, man, sit down. I sat down. He said, you're a tough guy, huh? I said, yeah, I'm tough. I'm 12 years old. 12 years old. And he said, uh, you know, tough guys wind up with broken bones and scars. He said, you're beyond that. I said, oh, yeah, you're going to go to prison or you're going to die. Mm. I had a gun in my pocket. I had a 25 caliber pistol in my pocket. And as he was speaking to me, the gun kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Yeah. And he said, I got you a gig, a job. You're going to work with an all African-American orchestra. I said, I'm not a musician. He said, no, you're going to be a band boy. You put out the charts. At the end of the gig, collect all the books and put them back in their respective order. I did. And the band leader by the name of Lucky Millinder came up to me and he handed me $50. He said, hey, man, you did a great job. Get yourself some new kicks, shoes. Mm -hmm. My shoes were torn to shreds. I had a big rubber band holding the sole on to the shoe. Next day, I went floor shine. Floor Broke shine. Shoes for $15. Gave my mother 35 more money than she had ever seen at one time. Mm. Oh, God. Well, 20 some odd years later, uh, first, he, Sammy had me working the Catskills, watching all the other comedians. And because I had a kind of a comedy bent. Yeah. And uh, tw as I said, 20 some odd years later, I'm on stage at the Sands opening for Tony Bennett. Mm. And sitting mm. in front of me is Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, and Sammy Davis Jr. Mm. When I finished my act, Frank got up and gave me a standing ovation. And when Frank stood up, the entire yeah, audience. The whole stood place, up. right. Right. And I was shocked. Everybody mm. ran backstage to see Tony, except Sammy Davis Jr. He came up to me and said, you're a funny cat, but 
where do I know you from? You look so familiar. And I said, Sam, I'm the kid that you said was going to go to prison or die. Mm. And he said, that's you? We stared at each other. We both broke into tears. The two of us are standing there hugging and crying. And none of it could have happened had my angel not been there for me. And it's, it, it's just amazing what I, what I went from there, becoming an award-winning actor. In Three Days of the Condor, I won a, an award for best fight scene in film. And then uh, a few months ago, I was flown to Vegas and received an award there for best fight scene in film ever. Mm. Congratulations. Wow. Thank, thank you. So when, you know, uh, during those years of youth, you stayed fit, you stayed always active? Well, I was also a pro wrestler. Right. I started wrestling when I was 16. No 16. one knew how old I was. No, yeah, right. And to get my license, you had to be at least 21. So they had my birth certificate. And so I suddenly was 10 years older. At 17, in real years, I became a pro. I was wrestling professionally as Hank Daniels, the Hank Minnesota Daniels. farm boy. I'd never been in Minnesota. I never saw him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, martial arts, I, I am uh, what they call a grandmaster in martial arts. Mm. That's amazing. So, so as that was happening, I mean, this opportunity, these opportunities you've had, uh, after that situation with Sammy, what happened next? We, the doors must have just flooded open for you. People are like this, this Hank Daniels, uh, let's bring him in, bring uh, him on well, board. The, uh, had it not been for Sam and the yeah. connections. Yeah. You know, it, and truly, uh, so many doors opened for me and I wasn't aware of how many recommendations he had made and just casually saying, Hey, I saw a kid that was so funny or Hey, did you see this guy in three days of the condor? And it spread. Uh, and one of the things that Sam said about me and uh, wow. He said, don't lose your humility. Mm. Mm -hmm. He right. said, and I, I, hopefully I, I never did. I am so gratified, so grateful. And I tell other kids that I speak to, whatever you do, don't lose that wonderful touch of a loving people and having them love you back. And that's been my motto all my life. I've uh, tried to help other people get started in the business. Uh, I go to hospitals and I was entertaining all the, the GIs. In fact, I was in Korea. I volunteered to go to Korea just to entertain. And I was frontline entertainment. In fact, <laughs> what the first day I went out uh, to uh, entertain the GIs and I hit the front line and machine gun opened up and I yelled, critics! <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and the, the, the kids, the G, I call them kids, yeah. the GI said, Mr. Garrett, don't make us laugh when we're trying to get that. Oh, <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I was in Korea three times. Um, I paid my own way. That's a fantastic. That is fantastic. We were uh, we actually we just had a guest on Saturday who um, she was a comedy writer for Phyllis Diller, Joan Rivers, and for years for Bob Hope. Aww. And she wrote this wonderful book, Dear Bob. 
and it has the correspondence and all of the uh, photos and personal letters oh, that were wow. writ written back and forth between Bob Hope and the GIs in World War II. And his daughter, Linda, also wrote it with uh, Martha Bolton is her name. She was a guest. So that reminds me, because of course, you know, Bob uh, did such a wonderful thing by supporting the GIs and supporting them during World War II. So for you to do that and to do it on your own time and your own dime for those, the vets of Korea, it's a beautiful thing, Hank. Well, uh, it's called giving back. Yes. If you don't, uh, I don't know how you cannot. Right, exactly, exactly. We've got uh, one of those photos I showed in the beginning, Hank, and maybe you can tell us uh, the scene exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a mid-air scene. There it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that. Uh, yeah, we both went flying <laughs> through the boat. <laughs> So, so tell the audience, the lovely audience, uh, where this is from and what was happening. Uh, this was, I, boy, I don't know if it was San Francisco, mm -hmm. but uh, I got to tell you a couple of incidents as a wrestler. At one time, I landed on the seat of my pants, and my mm. trunk split open in the back. Oh boy! It was some woman. In the audience, yelled peekaboo, <laughs> <laughs> and my manager threw me a towel. And when I covered myself with the towel, she yelled, "Oh shucks!" <laughs> <laughs> and and what did what did you say? Excuse me, madam, I didn't mean to butt in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I said, if I take a bow, I'll bow toward you. <laughs> always but, the gentleman, uh, always the gentleman. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Here's another great shot here. Oh, I mean, these are, these are amazing. Yeah, in fact, I, I was doing what they call an arm stretch. Uh, but I would I call that an arm stretch for sure. <laughs> absolutely. There was a, I was wrestling a, a gentleman of, of great uh, note. Yeah. And he had me, he picked me up, he threw me, and he was about to drop what they call dropping an elbow. He was going to come up in the air and come down and plant the elbow in my chest. Mm. And as he threw me and he was getting ready to go up and come down, I heard pow. And he grabbed the back of his head and he turned around and this little lady hit him with a Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, she was over a hundred years old mm. and she yelled, leave him alone, you big bully. <laughs> and he looked at her and he looked at me and said, I'm not going to do anything to her, but I'm going to kill you. Okay. <laughs> so now I got up to escort her out of the ring. It wasn't his mother, was it? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a wonderful payoff. <laughs> but I escorted her out of the ring and he said, get back in the ring. I get said, back. and she yelled, no, it's too damn dangerous. And we walked out. I didn't go in the, back into the ring. So I escorted her to her vehicle with a bunch of old ladies that were part of my fan club. And we we went, we had coffee together. And of course I got fined, but it was such a wonderful time. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, the memories I'm sure are still vivid today. Actually, we have another. Who is this uh, handsome gentleman here? Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's when I was compete. I competed as, when I was wrestling. I competed as a power lifter. And I broke the New York State power lifting record and my knees at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I did a, a absolutely incredible poundage. Just now I think about it and it, it, it scares me because now I have the payoff. 
my back, my legs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it lets you know what you did earlier in life. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, you really. Uh, I mean, uh, those biceps and triceps are doing their thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel every rep now. <laughs> you feel it all now. It comes back to it comes back to to get you. They really yeah. are amazing shots that we have here. Um, the car 54 where are you because of course so many people you know such a beloved series and people know that sitcom and it's still in reruns all these years later and there's fred gwynn and i mean the whole gang uh, how did that happen um that that was an amazing turn of events for you as well huh oh yes yeah. that was the biggest opportunity i had I had become a cop in New York uh, only because I thought I could make a difference. Uh, the cops in New York had a rep of uh, being really super tough. Uh, yeah. and, there was, and there was very little discussion. Right. Said, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm a cop. I'm going to make a difference. I could not make a difference. And a friend of mine, uh, who was a wonderful comedian, his wife was Nat Hyken's secretary. Nat Hyken created the Bill Co. Show, Car 54. Oh, yeah. So he, yeah. they got me an audition. Mm. And I went in to meet Nat Hyken, the creator. And I sat opposite him, and he looked at me, and he just went, hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're Ed Nicholson. I said, oh, no, 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 I'm Hank Garrett. Mm -hmm. he, just the kind of dummy I'm looking for. Nicholson is the character I want you to play on Car 54. And mm. that was suddenly I was one of the stars of this incredible show. Mm. Mm. Kathleen in New York City asks, uh, love Fred Gwynn. How was it working with Fred? Oh, Fred was wonderful. Yeah. Brilliant, soft-spoken. He wrote children's books and illustrated them. And uh, I look forward every morning to going to work. With, it was with, such an incredible the, time. Yeah. And and so funny, too. I mean, just so yes. like, yeah. And this is a great shot here, too. This <laughs> one. <laughs> that really is a great shot. Um, uh, so those years were very special on Car 54, weren't they, for you? Yes, yes, they were. Mm. Mm. Any um, stories as far as like on set, any of the crazy things that happened? You know, I know working uh, in television and, oh. and film and what can happen sometimes, uh, uh, you know, the craziness on set with equipment and, and everything that can happen. Must have been some... Lots of uh, levity on that set, huh? Oh, absolutely. We uh, we were at we had a studio in the Bronx, mm -hmm. the Biograph Gold Medal Studios. Now the front of the studio was made to look like a police uh, entrance, a, a police department entrance, and we've had people come running in, and mm. they, and I'm standing there in makeup, uh, and desk sergeant, and he ran up to the desk sergeant. And said, "Listen, there's a guy beating the heck out of his wife, so you you better do something. Send send some officers there." Yeah. <laughs> and the, the guy playing the death sergeant said, "Well, she probably deserved it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cops are you? Yeah. <laughs> and he ran out screaming, "Don't go in there! They're crazy!" God. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. That is funny. Ann in Florida says, welcome, Hank. Loved Car 54. Um, Merlin in Canada says, hi, Jim and Hank. All the lovelies. Glad to be back. Uh, Marty Thompson in Nashville by way of Australia. Frank, welcome to the Lovety gang. And um, yeah, uh, more wonderful comments coming in from our viewers. So that really was as much as it was um, fun and good times. 
it was a learning experience too. You probably watched some of like a Fred Gwynn and some of these other uh, actors and maybe picked up some tips and along the way as well, right? Oh, yes. We had yeah. some of the, the most amazing people as guests on the show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a very dear friend of mine who was one of the regulars on the show was a guy named Nipsey Russell. Uh, Nipsey was a wonderful oh, comedian. Yes, yes. Loved him on all the Dean Martin roasts, too. <laughs> exactly. He was on all the game shows, too. He was always a game show uh, celebrity. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, my God. Uh, so many, so many people appeared on the show, and every one of them had such an amazing, wonderful time. Yeah. I got to meet so many of the greats that I never would have met in life otherwise. Mm. And, oh, yeah. A, a, a quick example. Uh, I had gotten a call when I was wrestling. And the manager said, uh, would you like to pick up some extra money uh, as a bodyguard escort? I said, sure. And he didn't say who I was going to be working with. But they said, do you have a tuxedo? I said, yes. They said, well, uh, you don't have to wear the tux, but wear it anyway. If you, if you have a nice suit, that'll be fine. Well, they arranged for me to be picked up. A chauffeur-driven limousine comes and picks me up. I'm staying at the hotel. And we drive out. And the chauffeur is not saying anything other than, uh, yeah, yeah, you've got a good reputation. I, I see you a wrestler bodybuilder said, yes, sir. We go to Malibu. Oh, in Malibu. And uh, he says, I'll be right back. I stay in the car. And he's escorting a young lady to the car. I'm sitting there and I look and I go, oh, dear God, it's Audrey Hepburn. So, so <laughs> and he, he escorts her into the car and she says, hi. And I said, I can't speak. My tongue is falling on the floor. And she comes in and we go. And we go to, it's an event. It's a fundraiser for children's hospitals. And she's the guest. Mm -hmm. We go in uh, and she, they say to me, oh, you stay out here with the other chauffeurs. And she says, oh, no, 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 no. He's my escort. I'm escorted in. And I look and I see a couple of other bodyguards. So I'm heading. She says, where are you going? I said, well, I'll stand with the other bodyguards. She said, no, you sit next to me. You're my date. I... Uh, I stopped breathing for a while. Pinching yourself and you thought you were in an episode of the Twilight Zone or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> is this real? Is this real or is this a mirage? Is Rod exactly. Serling in the room? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting with her and we're having dinner. To get, uh, uh, there was a luncheon and they bid uh, $25,000 to have lunch or dinner with Audrey Hepburn. And uh, we finished and she's signing autographs and the, we get back in the car. I bet that was yeah. probably the slowest meal you ever ate. You probably <laughs> ate very slow. <laughs> I don't remember chewing anything. <laughs> I may, may have missed my mouth a few times. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I'm hitting myself yeah. in the head. <laughs> yeah. the Ketchup food. coming down the side. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, Hank! <laughs> Don't speak with a mouthful of food. <laughs> and they, we drive her home, and she says, "Thank you so very much. You are so sweet." I says, "Are you man?" 
and she and being on the so way back gracious back. probably just rolled with it right just being so yeah. elegant and gracious uh, yeah. oh, I, I understand I, what you mean hank <laughs> <laughs> i said audrey just call me anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they drive me back to the hotel and when i get back to the hotel the chauffeur said do you realize that you haven't stopped smiling since you got into the car. <laughs> oh my! You God. smiled for the next two weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, they couldn't wipe that smile off my face. And then I'm uh, my manager, and I said to him, "What do I owe you?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, "No, you're getting paid." I said, "I am." I thought just being with Audrey Hepburn is my payment. <laughs> That and payment too. Oh my god! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's called winning the lottery. <laughs> oh, wow. winning yeah. the lottery! Wow. Absolutely. What was she like for those watching? Who and there's a lot of comments coming in. People love her, admired her, her oh. beauty, her spirit, her graciousness, her talent. Uh, how would having spent time with her? How would you describe Audrey Hepburn? What a sweet, caring person. Uh, anytime somebody came over and asked for an autograph, she would say, thank you for asking me for my autograph. Wow. She was very humble. And she said she remembers the beginnings of her career. And uh, it's something I never forgot. I learned from her as well. Right. right. Uh, be grateful for what you have. Instead of complaining about something, try to make it better. Even if you only make it better up here. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Exactly. Wow. That's quite a story. That really is quite a story, my friend. <laughs> One oh. that, uh, yeah, I can't see how you... Uh, would never forget that one. Um, this sure. is really this is really cool. Uh, tied to um, GI Joe. Tell us about this. I do the voice of dial tone on GI Joe. Uh, I was doing a GI Joe convention. Yeah, and people came over to me, uh, and I was sitting at the table. It was a long line of people in that uh, big fans of G.I. Joe. And a guy actually came up to me. This was in Florida. A guy came in from New York to Florida with his family. And he had tears in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And he said, to think that I've lived long enough to meet G.I. Joe dial tone in mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And I was so flattered. You know, it's, a, it's just the voice that I do, but uh, it was so important to him. Uh, and we were selling autograph pictures. And mm. I, as I do with the book, yeah. uh, the proceeds go to the disabled American veterans. That's so beautiful. And mm. so far, uh, thanks to my manager, Deanna Marie Smith, Mm -hmm. who co-wrote the book uh, there would be no book without her yeah uh she was an amazing an amazing woman who sat with me and questioned me about every movement i made things that i had forgotten about and now uh, we have this book and so far we've raised over sixty thousand for disabled vets Congratulations. That's amazing. That is fantastic. Really fantastic. So would we yeah. with, the book, with the book, we will continue raising funds for the disabled American veterans. Do you have a story maybe from the book that you'd like to share with us to give people a sense of the book? That would be fantastic. Uh, well, it brought back so many memories. Uh, some were bitter uh, being on the street. And I remember it was Christmas. 
and I was on the street by myself. And I walked to Rockefeller Center and saw the people skating and having a wonderful time. And I realized I was alone. Christmas Day, I, I, I cried. Christmas Day, I went out. I never had any toys as a kid. We were very, very poor. And I saw kids coming out of their homes, regardless of uh, how poor they were, they, they still had toys. And I never had a toy. And when some of the kids came up to me and said, do you have any toys? I said, nah, nah. And, and I'm just a kid myself. I said, nah, that's for babies. And I was just dying inside. I wanted something that was being, would be presented to me, but there was nothing. And I remember being on the street and being very hungry. And I went, wow, boy, this is sprang it. I was at night, very cold night, didn't have much of clothes, found out from a couple of people who were, uh, who lived on the street, how to stay warm. You take newspapers, you crumple it mm -hmm. up, and you stick it under your clothing. I walked by a store, the windows were blacked out, but the store, the door was open and I heard music. And I heard people applauding in time to the music. And it was gospel, it was gospel music. And I stood in the doorway and a well-dressed man came up to me and said, hey, son. And I looked at him and he said, uh, would you like to come in? Because he saw I wasn't wearing a jacket. It was just a shirt and trousers. I said, yeah. He said, come on and get warm. He said, are you hungry? I said, yes, sir. There was a table. They call it a groaning table. It was just loaded with food. Mm. He said, eat as much as you want. He mm. said, please enjoy yourself. I sat and couldn't eat enough. I was gorging. And he said, do you have a mama? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, I'm going to pack up some food for you to take home to your mama. And he said, what's your name? And I said, and I told him my name. And he said, my name is Father Divine. He was an evangelist, a very famous evangelist at that time. He said, anytime you want some food or a place to be warm, you come here. Now today, if I hear the music, I cry. Sure. Brought back the memories. Hmm. How poorly I was dressed, how shabbily I was dressed, and it didn't make a difference to him. And he accepted me as I was. And this is what I do or try to do just accept people as they are mm -hmm. yeah and that's what it's about that's what that's what you know we taught that early on and sometimes you know people as life comes at us we sort of forget that but that's really the essence of what living is all about and uh absolutely beautiful story and just one of many that are in the book uh he really opens up about his life and it's so inspiring. And so, you know, it, it's hopeful too, because anybody that might be in a situation where they don't think they'd ever get anywhere, go further or change their setting or scenario, or some people don't remember, you know, what it took to take those steps in life to get ahead and to go forward and maybe pay homage to the people who helped guide and inspire and give you that 
leg up and um you know the the scrappy roots that you have growing up in harlem have definitely given you a certain sense of what life really is all about you've had really it's kind of a, an extraordinary dichotomy of experiences from the the scrappy roots of being in in harlem during those years with not a lot of money and you know everything going on as it does trying to get by to being exposed to you know the heights of the heights in hollywood of all places tinseltown <laughs> you've you've experienced all aspects of of the living experience yet remain hank through it all you're right. still hank you're still the authentic you know salt of the earth grassroots guy no matter what hollywood party it is or any of that you still remember the days back you know in the big city and what that meant and what that taught you and then pay heed to those along the way who you know saw something in you that said there there's uh there's a story here there's something here that's a little extra you know he's got that um He's got that X factor. This guy has that X factor. Let's let's bring him along, you know. And uh, and that's a very special person to do that. And then to share the story in book form, and have proceeds help others along the way too, who aren't always in the best uh, scenario of life. So, well, I thank you, you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, uh, and I, I've um, got to tell you something, quite honestly. The warmth that I'm getting from you makes me feel so comfortable as though I'm speaking to someone that I've known all my life. I feel so easy about speaking to you because you have this thing of making people feel that way. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Oh, oh. The, the pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. You know, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, the, the way I was raised and, you know, I pay homage to the, the parents, grandparents, the aunts and uncles, the experience of growing up, you know, out East on the Island on Long Island and that whole experience. And, uh, I think, uh, also that there's a, there's this New York connection that we have just a <laughs> certain unspoken, like, you know, you can, like I said to, uh, I think off air, you can take the, uh, New Yorker out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of the New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a similar, I guess, way of thinking. And I really, I'm honored that you would say that because you've obviously been interviewed by lots of people. You've been on a lot of shows over the years and have come across so many extraordinary people. So that's, um, that's something, uh, you remember the smile you had with Audrey Hepburn? Well, now I'm going to have mine for two weeks based on what you just said, Hank Garrett. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you don't quite look like Audrey, but you're still salt of the earth. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little taller, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Put a black wig on and yeah, that's it. Yeah, stand, exactly. stand back 500 feet and then, you know, <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> Oh, that plastic is. surgeons would be working for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. That's funny, oh, I just right? want to mention that the book can be had on uh, Amazon. And uh, very proud of the book. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Is that the first book that you've written? Or was there another yes. book as well? Title. Yeah, it's the title. Uh, it's it actually explains my life. I love your uh, production assistant in the back who's guiding along. Title, show him the title. <laughs> <laughs> we love her, and she's off to the side. She's uh, she's giving you the spotlight, but we love her and we thank her for being a wonderful assistant, making sure everything went well. She's my yeah, worked beautifully. We did a test run. She's amazing. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, the book, like you say, you have the book there. Is this your very first book or was there a book before? 
No, it's it's the first. We we're also working on a, a children's book. Oh, wonderful! Uh, yeah, and uh, wow, See, amazing. I, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, this this never could have happened. No, uh, not for the Anna Marie Smith. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, my friend. We uh, tell, take us through. There are a couple of people who have some wonderful questions that uh, wanted to. Uh, Christine in North Carolina says, "Words of wisdom, Hank. What you're talking about, so true. Accept others as they are and accept ourselves. Extremely personal and touching stories that you are sharing. Thanks so very, very much. And Merlin, thank you, Hank. You're bringing back so many memories." Mary says, such a beautiful story, Hank. And uh, Ms. K says, oh, that is for sure lovely. Accept people just the way they are. So timely. Thank you so much, Hank, as well. And then, and Kathleen says, wonderful story. I think they're all, the viewers on our show, they run right out and they'll get the book, I'm sure. That's such a touching story, Hank, for that father to take you in. That as well, Babette in Nashville, another date night worthy show. Love the stories, Hank. Our stories are often the key that unlocks someone else's prison. Uh, Crystal in Connecticut asks, hi, hi, Hank. How was it like, what was it like being the bartender in the movie, The Amityville, Amityville Horror? How did you get chosen for that role? Do you remember, gang? He was the bartender in Amityville Horror. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh God! Yes. Uh, what I was that just, like? Just gotten the call uh, from the casting people and said, uh, "Would you like to play the bartender in a movie called The Amityville Horror?" And I said, "Sure." And uh, there I was doing the part of the you know they gave me the script and uh, and it was history. Uh, I I was very fortunate truly uh doing so many different roles uh in commercials doing comedy commercials and god has been good god is always good I and think Mar marty asked what was it like being on the set of serpico what was that like oh mm, yeah i another. played, played a, a bad detective called Muscles Malone. And uh, it's funny, but Al Pacino came to me and said, uh, where do you work out? And I, I told him the gym that I was training in. And he said, I, I, I'd love to come down. And I said, sure, Al, please be my guest. Well, one day I'm standing here working out with a lot of other behemoths because I was huge. And I saw Al standing in the doorway of the gym. Mm. And I said, Al, come on in. He said, everybody seems to be sweating. Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, that's what happens when you work out. <laughs> he said, uh, no, nah, this is not for me. And he turned and left. And somebody said, was that Al Pacino? I said, yes. You know him? I said, well, I worked with him on the, the movie Serpico. Mm -hmm. and said, wow. Why didn't he come in? Yeah. I said, well, if you stop sweating, he probably would. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and then I saw him, uh, I guess, a day or two later uh, when we were still shooting Serpico. That is funny. There was a legendary news anchor in New York City on the CBS affiliate, WCBS TV Channel 2. His name was Jim Jensen. He was with the station for many, many years. Uh, a real a professional, you know, classic old school anchor man in New York on Channel 2. And I think he had said once... Um, about anchor people and said, um, anchor people don't sweat. We perspire. <laughs> <laughs> they glow. Yeah, they glow. <laughs> they glow. Exactly. Got a couple of really cool photos here that we take a look. Here is with Kirk Douglas, right? Tell us about oh, this one. Yes. Yeah. Wow. There was a fight scene I had with him. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, <laughs> Kirk said to me, listen, Hank, I've got a wonderful reputation. I have never made contact. Mm. Now I saw some of the other guys on the set yeah. kind of like uh, laughing, yeah. giggling. <laughs> so he said, okay, action. Action. <laughs> so I saw, I get up from behind me and I walk toward him and he throws his punch and it hits me square in the face. Mm. Now I, afterwards, my reaction was to return the shot, but that yeah. wasn't in the script. So <laughs> I, I, I walk over to him and I say, uh, her, I, I, uh, excuse me, but uh, I want to talk to you about your reputation. I said, not only did you destroy your, rep your reputation, look at what you did to my nose. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. In fact, I had a photograph of him holding his head and laughing yeah. at what he said. Uh, and we became friends. Yeah. And years later, he was doing a one-man show. So we went to see him. And we went backstage. And the first thing he said to me, how's your nose? <laughs> you remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific yeah. guy. What an amazingly talented guy. Oh, Kirk Douglas. Yeah. And his son, too, Michael, huh? Sure. Michael as well. Chip yeah. off the old block. Michael. Absolutely. Wow. And another legend, too, who uh prolific actor and, of course, uh, for many years, the voice of CNN, James Earl Jones. Oh. Tell, us about, tell us about this. Now, here you're really talking. Two, two, two class seen. acts in this photo. You know, James and I had a series. I was co-starring show called, oh dear, I forgot the Paris. name. Paris. Paris. Yeah. And he's a detective. I'm deputy chief inspector, police yeah. department. Yeah. So I'm his superior. Yeah. And our relationship was so wonderful. And when we came out, we were the number one show. And MTM, uh, is where we had our show at CBS. At MTM. Mary Tyler Moore, yeah, Mary Tyler Moore yes. Productions, yeah. And there was another show that was in trouble, a thing called Trapper John. Oh, yeah, Trapper John MD, yes. Mm -hmm. We switched our time. They put us in the time that Trapper John was having a problem, and they put us on opposite heart to heart. And it's oh, first yeah. season. Robert Wagner and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I heard taps when I heard <laughs> the call. And so we're switching you opposite heart to heart. <laughs> <laughs> so we were canceled. They, they destroyed but us. Still a great experience, huh? To work together and oh, yeah. 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 There's look at this shot. Condor. Mm. I'm disguised as a mailman and I'm a CIA assassin. And I have to go into a particular office that has been asking too many questions. Mm -hmm. And I have to stop. We go in to kill everybody in the place. Yeah. Redford is out buying lunch for mm. all the other people in the office. And I miss him. Yeah. But I then and I machine gun everybody. My Max mm. von Sydow was my boss in this this episode, mm. and so we track Robert Redford. And I go in; he's hiding in Faye Dunaway's apartment. Mm. And so we I track him there, and I walk in as as though I'm delivering a package, mm -hmm. and I try to kill him and. That's when we did the fight. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. Quite a scene. I, I mentioned this one earlier. To, and here's another shot too here. Yeah, yeah. that's one of uh, machine gunning a guy who was up on a, yeah. a stairway. Yeah. And I just fire. with, yeah. And 
as Sidney Pollack, who was directing, said, no expression, Hank. It's just the job. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Yeah. Said, okay. And I played it all through the, the, the scene. Not excited. Just go do your work. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Remember I mentioned this shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's taken during the fight scene with Redford. Wow. Yeah. Look, you forgot the pickles on my hamburger. Are we going to fix this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a cool, you know, you, you really, yeah, the, the variety of facial expressions, it just shows the, the raw talent because to be able to go from, uh, you know, so many different things that you've done, but to have the opportunity to go from something like, you know, the joviality of, uh, and the jovialness of car 54 to, to these other more dramatic works, um, and even the GI Joe experiences as well. Do you have a preference? Do you lean comedic or do you love the dramatic as well? I don't have a preference. It's just being able to do something that I love doing. Right. Right. Whether it's, it's drama or comedy or, or voice work. It's I'm so grateful. Yeah. To have this amazing opportunity. Yeah. And the public has been, oh my God, so incredible. As I said, I'm so grateful. Uh, when, when I go and do an autograph show, I'm grateful to every one of the people that come up to buy a, the book or, or, or an autograph. And somebody told me years ago, don't go to rise above the people that support you. Right. It's not expected, but you are just like everybody else. And God has been good. See, that's what I was saying earlier. You're just so settled and salt of the earth and you, you get what it's all about. Uh, and I think that's an absolutely beautiful thing, you know, to have that grounding because you've seen like all aspects of life. And I think that just makes you a very versatile and well-rounded, not only, you know, talent and actor and an athlete, but person as a whole. And I think that's why people have gravitated uh, to you over the years and have really wanted to hear your stories and want to read a book like this. They're, they're, you know, enthralled, um, like all of the stories that you just shared now, and there's so many more in the book are so yes. open and they're all teachable moments in your own life. Right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, it, and as, as I, you know, I'm, I'm just repeating, I had forgotten so much, uh, yeah. purposely. Yeah the terrible times of my life and Deanna Marie Smith brought me back where it wasn't harmful. It didn't give me nightmares again. Uh, it was just recounting my life and my experiences. And she was undaunting, making sure that all the T's were crossed and the, the, all the I's were dotted. She just an amazing human being. I would imagine it would have to have been a very emotional thing to do as well, because you are recalling so many different aspects of your life and the people uh, who are here now and those who've passed through your life who are gone and some of the memories, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, I'm sure it was a, very deep, moving, almost cathartic experience for you, sharing all of that in your book, huh? Yes. Well, uh, I, I just wanted to add one other thing. Deanna Marie, who was an international clothing designer, she had her own business in London, New York. Uh, 
And so she is such an interesting character on her own. And I'm so blessed that she would do this book with me. And uh, oh, wow, amazing. I'm sorry, but I, I, I just had a, she's no, such an incredible creature. I mean, that, no, that's fantastic. I think it's, you know, thanking somebody who uh, guided you along, I think is, is a beautiful thing. I don't think people do that enough, uh, you know, in the world. So that's a beautiful thing that you do that, uh, Hank. Another great shot here. Tell us about oh. this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> dressing Peter Falk on Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> That's in one of the episodes of Columbo, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I played his boss. You were his boss. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like working with uh, Peter Falk? Oh, wow. Well, mm. I originally met him in New York. He had a show called uh, Trials of O'Brien. Mm -hmm. He was an attorney. And I didn't know much about him. Uh, I, I knew the name. Mm -hmm. and I used to do his voice in my act. I did an impression. Uh, I'll tell you. Now, I'm playing a scene. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, my agent called. I was with the Morris Agency. They said, Hank, uh, there's a day's work. It's going to pay well. Mm -hmm. if you're going to go to this some guy's office and you've got to take out the furniture because he's missed alimony payments. <laughs> so you're, I, you're the repo I, guy. <laughs> oh, exactly. I'm in a jumpsuit and I, I grab a chair and I'm in the scene, the action, grab the chair, turn around. And he, he says, where are you going with my furniture? So I grab the chair and he comes. Hi, oh, excuse me. Uh, well, where are you going with my furniture? And I turn and I go, I drop the chair and I said, that's Peter Falk. He said, cut. Uh, hang. <laughs> we know it's Peter Falk. Another Audrey Hepburn moment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now, they said, oh, God, Hank, no, please don't say it's Peter Falk. That's not what you say. You say, well, I'm taking your furniture because you didn't pay uh, the alimony. <laughs> now I'm doing Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> and Peter says to me, uh, uh, how are you, Hank? I haven't seen you in such a long time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you still doing me in your act? I said, well, Peter, I, I don't do impressions anymore. He said, are you going to tell me that I have lost favor with you? Is that what you're trying to say? I said, Peter, I'm putting the voice right back in the act. It's there forever. He said, smart move. <laughs> that was it. Oh, he with, was a wonderful with, with cigar in tow and everything, right? And the trench, ca the beige trench coat, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful times! Wonderful. So, in, in addition to writing this fantastic book, which we do encourage folks to definitely uh, acquire and add to their collection, and they need not be, you know, a television or film buff or anything. It's a really an inspiring story of uh, of a man's life uh, and all the experiences so openly and elo eloquently shared with all of us. Um, what are some of the things that you're also working on now? Are you just are you have, you're kicking back and, and you're just in, you know, smelling the coffee and enjoying, or are you actively involved in a lot of different projects at the moment? We are involved in getting this called Hanksters Kids. Uh, as I had mentioned, being from the street and know what the street is like, we want to give the kids a place to come to, get off the street, you don't have to carry a gun to come in to hang those kids. If you're hungry, we'll feed you. If you're still in school, bring your schoolwork with us. We'll help you. 
we want to give you a safe place to be. Don't worry about being a tough guy. If you want to, we'll train you in martial arts. We'll train you in anything you're interested in. But come to us. Let us help you. Let us guide you. Let us give you a safe place to be. That is beautiful. How do people uh, find out more about that if they're watching this live or in the archives on our YouTube channel, Jim Messers TV, and they either they themselves or they know somebody who could really benefit from the resources from that? Uh, contact, contact me directly if you choose at Hank dot garrett at yahoo.com and they'll they'll be able to uh connect and I, don't, and... I don't give that out to anyone right i just want to save some lives right absolutely absolutely it's beautiful full circle i mean the, the breadth and scope of uh your extraordinary experience when you look at all of this uh hank uh, as I like to ask, what are some of those continued blessings and joys in your life that bring you the inspiration to continue uh, what you do so beautifully? And when you look at the sum of the work and the people you met and the experiences and, and your own personal growth through it all, what are some of the blessings that come to mind for you, Hank? <sighs> that God is always good. Even in your darkest hours, just address God. It'll help you. We do that at the Anna Marie and I, whenever we put food into our mouths, we thank God for being so generous. We have friends that are having problems. We pray for them. I've never been a religious person. I truly have not been. Uh, I did not believe being on the streets. There was nothing to believe in. <sighs> when things started happening, I know they didn't happen by accident. It was a plan. Trust God. Uh, he will guide you. And uh, as I said, I never was a religious person. I didn't believe in organized religion. I've been exposed to a lot of so-called organized religions. God is in your heart. And he doesn't make mistakes. And uh, I am so grateful. I'm so grateful for the people that I have run into, your audience uh, responding. It's, it's so flattering, so enlightening. I'm like, God, it's, it's such, my head is, is <laughs> just about to explode. Uh, I don't know how to handle compliments. I don't. But boy, doing your show, what an experience this is. I've done, without exaggeration, over 40 shows or more. And I've never felt the way I feel now about the other shows. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Mm. The pleasure is all mine, Hank. Uh, a good friend you are now, and I hope that uh, if you're ever back east or I'm on a TV shoot on the West Coast, uh, we do get together when we can and break bread. I would really love to do that with you. I think we have some great stories to share and lots of laughs, too. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll bring along another friend as well who's been watching and enjoying throughout the evening. George Burns is with us. Ha, 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 ha.
George. <laughs> there he is with a cigar in tow and everything. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, that's wonderful. You can't go wrong when you have God on your side. And he played God, remember? Yes. <laughs> <In the movie. laughs> that's cool. Oh. So there's George. <laughs> You look like a little kid right now, and I love it. You look so like there's George, and you're having a good time. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, my friend. And I want to just show you a couple of things here. Maureen says, you are such an honorable man, Hank. Your story and your wonderful words have touched my soul. She's in Arizona, and she works She works in the medical field in a hospital in Arizona. So she's one of those who has been getting people through COVID and everything that's been happening. So bless, uh, bless Maureen, right? Absolutely. Linda in Florida says, you are a lovety now. You have to come back, Hank. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we'll keep you. the porch light open for Hank for sure. And uh, Juanita says, you're an amazing person, Hank. You have really risen above your circumstances and are spreading love to the world. You are a true lovety, our favorite word here on the show. Absolutely. And uh, Merlin is saying uh, in Canada, amen. And uh, Mary in Florida, amen. Kathy in Cleveland, amen. And Linda in Florida, amen. And Maureen, amen. And Ms. K, amen. <laughs> Which is really, really nice. And uh, Linda says, uh, it's so precious what you're doing for those children. God bless you, Hank. Really, really nice. And uh, Joe Megan B says, wow, true class. Amazing, Hank. Thank you for sharing your life and time with us in Wozniak in Jacksonville, Florida. You are awesome, Hank. Thank you for sharing. Mary Bishop in Florida, wonderful conversation, Jim. And thank uh, Hank uh, left so much tonight. Thank you. Kathy Short in Cleveland, an amazing story, Hank. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Marty Thompson in Nashville. Hank, you bring great memories and wisdom. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, um, isn't that great? Uh, that's wow. what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So anytime you are down, just join us here on the Gym Master Show Live and we'll pick you up, you know, where we're uh, sort of, I said in the beginning, what I like to do um, is have a warm and welcoming atmosphere that's hearkening back to the Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson, Mark Douglas, Merv Griffin days where warm conversations, maybe sprinkling in that modern vibe and modern twist of today, but underneath that, that warm, welcoming uh, time spent with inspiring conversation and entertainment, sort of bringing back the lost art of conversation on the show. So um, I hope it met your expectations, my friend, and you enjoy the time with me. I sure did with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me and allowing me to, to, to share my life with you and your, your listeners. Thank you. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. And again, I want to make mention, my friend, the book itself, again, is available. Uh, you said at Amazon, right? Yes. Amazon, From Harlem Hoodlum to Hollywood Heavyweight. Wonderful book. Check it out. And uh, five stars, too. You're mentioning it's been garnering all kinds of stars. Five stars, which is congratulations, Hank. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you've always been a five star, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You, you're just seeing it in print now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ms. K says, I feel encouraged about life, Hank. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's cool. It could be a Freudian slip a little bit. She spelled, <laughs> she spelled Hank hunk. <laughs> so I feel encouraged about life, hunk. Um Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you to our dear Jim for this amazing show. My pleasure, um, Ms. K, always. And uh, probably maybe when she was writing Hank and wrote Hunk, she was thinking of that shot there, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's more than likely what it is. Thank you for those beautiful words, Ms. K. Kathleen Walker in New York City, thank you for sharing your life with us, Hank. Merlin in Canada. Bye-bye, Hank. Stay safe. Linda in Florida, I have enjoyed every minute of our lovely conversation with Jim and Hank. Thank you. And Miss Kay comes back and says, Hank is a hunk. He, he. <laughs> so, there you go. so she meant Hank and hunk. That's funny. Uh, and maybe because of the photo. Ha, ha, ha. 
Uh, you're the best. This truly was uh, extraordinary. And more coming in. <laughs> Christine Clifton in North Carolina. Hank, thanks so much for your openness and your amazing stories. I have high respect for what you're doing for the children in need, paying it forward. You are a true lovety, an honor being with us. Thank so, uh, Hank, I wish you nothing but continued joy in your life and good health. And may you continue doing what you do so well and that you love. And again, all of these incredible experiences that we have gone over here have just really scratched the surface of your extraordinary talents, your extraordinary life. You've touched people in so many ways um, and sometimes literally like in that picture. <laughs> and uh, you have left an indelible mark, not only on uh, all of us from an entertainment point of view, but just in terms of what it means to have uh, character and class, both of which you certainly have. So uh, we will keep the porch light open and on for you, my friend, and you're welcome back anytime. And I hope you enjoyed yourself and we we're a class operation here. So we toast you in style, toast, 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 chow, slanche, cheers, uh, mazel tov, the whole bit. And uh, we welcome you to join us uh, again, my friend. And let's stay in touch, you know, off the show too. I would Absolutely. really I, I would thoroughly enjoy that. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. You have a wonderful rest of your evening, my friend. And thanks for spending all of this time with us. We really thoroughly and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Juanita, South Africa, where it's already tomorrow, says this was a great episode with lots of laughs, deep conversation. Keep well, Hank, and keep up the great work. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Good thanks. stuff. You have a good night, my friend, and thanks Thank so much you. for joining us, okay? Stay well and God bless. You too. <laughs> take care be well and thank uh everybody there for helping and all the wonderful work uh that has uh, been done behind the scenes to make this happen as well yes yes thank right. you take care have a good night the incredible hank garrett the legend right here for you on the gym master show live you know what's really cool about these conversations on our show is warm and welcoming and inviting uh, as we like to make them you also get a chance to learn about the person behind the person you see on the screen. Uh, films, television galore, um, so many incredible things he's been involved in and literally just scratching the surface and telling us about these experiences, the story with Sammy Davis Jr. and Audrey Hepburn and Kirk Douglas and so many others. Um, he just really has had a wonderful experience. But if you notice something, which I am a, pretty deep listener, uh, if you noticed, he really paid heed and homage to those that he worked with, James Earl Jones, so many others, the respect uh, in working with these people, uh, Peter Falk, you know, all of them over the years, um, as much as, you know, he might have been in awe of some of the people, he really is right there, you know, at their level, of course, uh, and equal to their experiences and talent. But at the same time, uh, you know, working with Fred Gwynn and so many others, he tips the hat to them, which I think is a beautiful thing because people don't always do that, you know, uh, they don't always do that. And if you listen closely, and, and I encourage you to uh, watch this show again, because it was very inspiring as much as it was fun filled and lots of laughs and uh, good times. There was a lot of poignant moments in there with Hank where he was uh, just really opening up about his life and how touched he was being on the show and joining all of us, but at the same time, uh, expressing the uh, adoration and admiration he has for all the people that have been in his life, uh, past and present. And I think that is um, great. Not what you expected. What a nice guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, if, if you only saw that photo, <laughs> well, then maybe when you got a chance to hear from him tonight, you saw, you know, the true, the true gentleman, uh, the heart and soul behind all these characters, the comedic characters, the dramatic characters, and so much more. I encourage you again. Uh, I know you guys are really good. You're going to run out and get the book. And we just literally, again, Amazon has it from Harlem hoodlum to Hollywood heavyweight. And, um, you know, he, he really, 
t opens up even more in this book and it's just extraordinary. And uh, so check that out. I think you will enjoy it. It makes a great gift for somebody as well. It is available there on Amazon and we thoroughly thank him for joining us. I mean, we're talking about a Hollywood legend there. He's been doing this for decades and um, he's, uh, he's one of those guys that salted the earth, you know, with all the glitz and glamour that's around him. He's a regular guy, straight shooter. And I think that uh, that street upbringing that he had is what's kept him grounded, salted, and uh, authentic. And that is also refreshing in this day and age. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's necessarily keeping up with the Kardashians <laughs> or if he really needs to. <laughs> uh, as much as the guests feel uplifted by the show, Jim, they lift us up also with their great life stories and kindness. That's right. It takes a village. Yes, it does. We're all in this together. Phenomenal nostalgic show, Jim. You did a great job and you bring the best out of your guests. Thank you very much, Marty Thompson. I appreciate that in Nashville. And uh, Linda says, yes, great show. Thank you very much. Great show as well from Kathleen in New York City. Again, we, we, thank, uh, we thank Hank Garrett for joining us today. Really, he was uh, absolutely spectacular. He had a great shot of him too, one of his headshots uh, through the years. So again, you can uh, check out uh, more through the book. One more time, we'll show you the book here. There it is for... Uh, for the taking. Enjoy that. I want to let you know we have uh, a bevy of amazing guests that are joining us as well. Uh, in coming weeks, tennis legend and ESPN tennis commentator Patrick McEnroe is going to be with us. His brother, of course, is legendary John McEnroe as well. He's going to be here. We're looking forward to that. Uh, we also have Ava. Ava, who is originally with Celtic Woman, she's going to be with us as well. Wonderful Irish singer and songwriter. Next week, legendary actor Charles Bush is going to be with us as well. We look forward to that. And uh, we also have Jenna Robbins. She's an amazing producer, actress, director. She's going to be with us as well. A phenomenal singer and a very spiritual person, the wonderful... Queen Andrea is going to be with us next week as well. In coming weeks, the incredible Brazilian and American singer, songwriter extraordinaire, Nathan Pacheco is going to be with us. I interviewed him on public television on PBS, and he's going to be with us as well. Another wonderful actor, Dan McCormick, is joining us as well. That's coming up next week. We're looking forward to that. On uh, Saturday, we have an amazing actress, originally from Canada. She is in Hollywood in L.A., and uh, she wrote a phenomenal book about dealing with the grief of losing a pet, which a lot of people go through in their life. So we're going to talk about her amazing career in acting, but also this new book that she has out. She's go We're going to be doing two shows on Saturday. She's going to be with us at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific on the Gym Master Show Live. That's this Saturday. And then on Saturday night, we've got another show, a brilliant singer and songwriter extraordinaire, the award-winning Lords Lane is going to be with us. There she is on the screen. So we're going to have a night of incredible music with Lords Lane. She's going to perform live as well Saturday night. We're looking forward to that. Upcoming soon is from Celtic Woman. And of course, um, she's a wonderful Irish singer, songwriter, but also an extraordinary vocal coach. Um, and uh, she used to be with uh, Celtic Woman, one of the founding um, founding members of Celtic Woman. And uh we're talking about another dear friend I've interviewed on uh, public television. Lisa Kelly is going to be joining us as well. And look at this dashing shot of our special guest tonight, Hank Garrett, huh? <laughs> that is uh, one dashing guy there. So uh, this that's just a little uh, short list of some of the amazing guests that are coming up. Of course, Ryan Kelly from Celtic Thunder is going to be joining us as well. He's coming up on uh, April 18th. He's going to be with us. So we've got a bevy of amazing guests and so much more. We're going to do more of those host chat uh, lovety shows and pop-up shows as well. Ms. Case goes woo, absolutely, or wow. Yeah, a lot of conversation and good times coming up. Thank you, Mary, for joining us as well. And Kathy Short in Cleveland for joining us. Wonderful conversation tonight. Thanks so much for another great guest. And uh, really good to see 
all of you. And post office, you sent a package, huh? A care package, a lovely package. Well, we'll have to scoop that up. Uh, tomorrow's Good Friday. I wonder if the post office is open tomorrow. We'll scoop that up over the weekend. Thank you, Kathleen. All of Hank's photos were amazing, weren't they? And that just skims the surface. Absolutely. Um, Christine says, Jim, thanks for this beautiful conversation with Hank. I feel Hank was a genuine levity and grateful to have learned so much more of his life tonight and inspiring uh, an inspirational evening. Another great episode. Thank you very much, Christine. We really appreciate that. And, um, Really wonderful comments you guys are sharing with us tonight. And we say thank you very, very much for, for you guys being here. We toast all of you. Don't forget, as we always say here on the show, you know, we've done about 375 episodes. Uh, you can find us 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, generally, uh, on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. If you happen to have missed an episode or if you'd like to see this episode of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series again, everything is there for you 24-7 on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Share the channel. Tell everybody you know about the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We would absolutely love that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share the uh, link and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. And also, we always say, don't forget to smile. That's really important. It's the best contagion out there is uh, smiling and sharing it. A lot of miserable people, uh, you know, so share some smiles. Obviously, uh, Hank talked tonight about paying it forward and sharing uh, his talents and expertise and, uh, you know, his gifts. And I think that's a beautiful thing. As we always say, don't forget to share the levity. That's really important. And don't forget to find your Zen place. Being here on the East Coast in the Northeast and growing up near the ocean, uh, for me, the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie, boogie boarding, and uh, sailing it, walking it, floating it, whatever it is, it's a Zen place for me. Uh, really is a place of peace and tranquility. So get out uh, in nature whenever you can and find some constants. We've had a crazy 12 months, right? So go out in a forest get around nature, you know, plant a garden, whatever it is, um, play some sports, uh, toss the ball around, uh, or go in and cook some bread, whatever you want to do, bake some bread or go outside and just go to the ocean if you're near one. And of course my, um, uh, career in television, radio and stage, that's another Zen place for me. Hank talked about do what you love, love what you do. I agree wholeheartedly. So everything I've had an opportunity to do in television, radio and stage that I love still doing is uh, also of great importance to me and another Zen place for me as well. And as we always say, gang, don't forget to love one another. That's very important. And love yourself. You know, we say here on the Gym Master Show Live that everybody's welcome, regardless of your income, zip code, any political views, religious views, height, weight, uh, income, uh, eye color, none of it matters. Um doesn't matter what car you drive, everybody's welcome here. So relax, breathe, take time for yourself. Join us as often as you can here on the Gym Master Show Live for good entertainment, amazing guests, light, love, levity, levity, inspiring conversations, and a, and a warm place to come where we always learn something too along the way. We have a lot of laughs. We have good times. We always learn something or along the way, which I think is really, really cool. Juanita in South Africa says, good night, everyone. Have a great Easter weekend. You as well. We will be back on Saturday. We're going to be back on Saturday. So join us two shows on Saturday, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern and then 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back on Saturday. Ms. K says, much love and support. Thank you, Ms. K. Keep spreading the word about our show. We love having you here. And uh, Kathleen Walker says, have a great night, Jim. Lovity, hugs, good night, all stay safe. So we're going to be back on Saturday. We may do a quick pop-up show tomorrow, which is Good Friday. So if we do, check our Facebook page, Jim Masters TV. Again, check the Facebook page if we decide we have a quick moment to do a quick Good Friday pop-up show tomorrow. Uh, but we're going to be here Two shows, three o'clock and seven o'clock Eastern on Saturday. Okay. And uh, good night, everyone. Jim, another great show as always. Hank, so nice to meet you and thanks for your time. Truly enjoyed listening to your story. Hugs and love to all. Mona in Louisiana, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, Ms. K, good night to you as well. And you just woke up. <laughs> the time that you have where you are, absolutely. And uh, 
Thank you very much. Good night, Jim and everyone. Yes, enjoy tomorrow. We, we're not here tomorrow night. We might do an afternoon pop-up show. So you go enjoy the Burn Brothers. Tell them I said hi. We're going to be back officially on Saturday with our regularly scheduled shows. Two shows, Double Lovity on Saturday. Good night, Mr. Lovity. Good night, Lovity. Sending Lovity love to you as well, Linda Odell in Florida. Uh, we appreciate that. And uh, we wish you guys the best. Thanks for all the love, the support, watching. Ms. K says, uh, see you all. Absolutely. Uh, see you all on Saturday. Absolutely. Uh, Maureen was at the hospital, so she didn't get a chance to see the entire episode, but what you did see is phenomenal. Thank you, Jim. And you'll get a chance to rewatch it in the archives on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Gang, we love you all. Again, we may do a pop-up show tomorrow, so check out our Facebook page if we do something quick. Otherwise, we'll be back on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, with a special guest, Reagan Pasternak, the wonderful actress, and her new book about dealing with the loss of a pet. And also, uh, Lords Lane, the amazing singer-songwriter, coming up on Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for Pan Pacific. For all of us here, sending you just the best. If you're not with us this uh, weekend, Best blessings uh, for a very happy and blessed uh, Easter weekend as well. We love you all. Thanks for being with us. Continue to share the word about the Gym Masters Show live, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Take care. Mm -hmm.